Being controlling and entitled, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, which is why I've put together the comprehensive course, This Is Me. It consists of 25 videos, each with accompanying documents and guided questions. I'm going to teach you how to maintain proper boundaries despite their efforts to the contrary. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it therapeutic. I want to go into a bit of a difficult space with you here today as we talk about post-traumatic stress that can be caused by a relationship with a narcissist or even a narcissistic system. Now, it's one thing to say that you can have stress when you've been around some difficult people or groups of individuals. And when we talk about stress, we're talking about having a feeling of emotional duress because of adverse circumstances that you just weren't expecting or didn't need. But then when we add on that word traumatic, when you have traumatic stress, that takes the whole notion of duress to an entirely different level. When we talk about you being under post-traumatic stress, we're talking about you having a sense of shock to your system where you're just not acting as normally as you would like. You can have a feeling of emotional paralysis. Uh, it may be that you have a very heightened sense of vigilance and your level of trust has gone way down and you can have all sorts of bad memories because of disturbing experiences. When you've been in the presence of a narcissist, they just have a way of whittling away at who you are and what your resolve is and how you're going to manage life. And as a result, you can have, you can carry quite a bit of emotion with you that's not what you were intended to have. Emotions like fear and anxiety or heightened anger or depression or confusion or um, bitterness, a sense of futility can come upon you. And then one of the things that we know about post-traumatic stress is uh, when you're in this trauma, you have a real hard time letting go of it. Uh, you keep going back to the events that happened and you relive it because it was so strong and it was so counter to what your body needed that you're having a hard time coming to terms with it. Uh, with post-traumatic stress, typically the emotions linger. You find yourself sometimes weeks, months, years, decades, going back in your memories, thinking to yourself, how am I going to make sense of all of this? That's what we're talking about when we say when life with a narcissist is, uh, is going to be such that it takes you out of your realm of normalcy. Now, when we talk about identifying post-traumatic stress, there are four major categories that we can look at that can help you identify if this is indeed something that you're dealing with. The first category we're going to mention is, and I just mentioned this very briefly, you can have disturbed memories. And those memories can be triggered by who knows what kind of stimulations. It may be that you're in a conversation socially and someone mentions something and boom, it happens. And your mind just goes back to some very difficult circumstances. Or you may be reading a book or watching a movie or a television show and something triggers you. Or it just may be that you're having a good time and you uh, and something happens and you recall some of the uh, great difficulty. When we have disturbed memories... Uh, you go back and you relive those episodes all over again and you try to uh, retrace your steps. How did I get involved in this? What was going on inside of me? Uh, why was I so vulnerable? You can have some flashbacks. Sometimes uh, these, uh, uh, these memories can show up in dreams where you just uh, dreams will represent much of your unfinished business that might be there. And so you can see that uh, there can be times when you're, you're having a normal kind of day and then something happens and you go backwards and it's like, I still haven't been able to figure that out. Now, a second major indicator, uh, category of behaviors that uh, indicates that you're in a type of trauma is that you can go into avoidant reactions. When you've been through trauma, your trust is broken. Your, uh, your uh, feeling of confidence regarding your connections with other individuals has been diminished greatly. And as a result, it's like, uh, 
I don't want to talk to people. I don't know if I want to connect with individuals anymore. For example, I've heard people who've been through family or marital situations that were really awful and they'll say, I don't ever want to marry again or I can live like a hermit and I'll be just fine. You can have social withdrawal. You can be very reluctant to connect with other individuals or if you do, you might do so in a, a very superficial kind of way. There may be people from your past that uh, are were connected with that narcissistic individual or they just remind you of that. And it's like, I'm just going to avoid events and people and circumstances. So that avoidant reaction, a third category that you can have is you can have a, a wide array of mood swings. I want you to think in the aftermath of having lived with a narcissist, you tend not to have that smooth and steady and peaceful kind of mindset, but instead pessimism can creep into your moods. You can have a feeling of doom and gloom, and it's like this world is just really difficult. You can be down on yourself, and you can have a, a sense of questioning of your own decency and guilt. You know, how in the world did I get myself hooked up with something like that, and I, I don't like the way I responded? You can be down on other individuals. You can have a sense of futility and a suspicion regarding other people. You can be cynical in the way that you engage. Sometimes you just feel numb in your mood or you feel detached. Often you have what we refer to as free-floating free anger, free-floating anxiety. There may be no particular impetus right there in front of you, but that emotion is there. And then a fourth category that is part of your uh, uh, post-traumatic stress is that you can uh, uh, experience some uh, adjustments in your lifestyle. For example, many times when people have been through something like this, they'll pick up uh, excessive drinking habits or substance abuse. Uh, it's kind of like they've decided, well, who cares? I'm just going to do whatever feels good in the moment. Sometimes in your lifestyle habits, you have such a, a feeling of being startled and, and, and agitated that you become very cautious in the way that you engage. Uh, or maybe you go into the other direction. You become very rebellious. It's like, I don't want to participate with any groups because whenever I've tried to and go along with other individuals, it hasn't worked out very well. You might become more argumentative. You might not tend to your normal chores and duties and responsibilities because it's like, I give up. You see what I'm talking about? And many times when you've been exposed to this wrong set of circumstances, the narcissist brings, this post-traumatic stress is going to be what occurs. Now, the way I look at it as a therapist is I see that uh, all of this reaction that you can have is evidence that what you were exposed to was simply wrong. And it's important for you to recognize the reason you have this traumatic stress reaction is it's your body and it's your spirit and it's your mind's way of saying, I didn't deserve this. Nobody deserves to be controlled like the narcissist like to uh, control and micromanage. Nobody needs to be exposed to the type of judgments and the shame that narcissists can put upon you. Uh, you don't need to have your dignity or your respectability impugned the way that narcissists do, but they, they do it. That's not something you deserve. And all of the intermittent uh, reinforcement, in other words, the consistent inconsistency that the narcissist brought, that was not something that you uh, needed to have. You didn't need to be on the receiving end of a narcissist's contempt or their hatred, or their manipulations. Uh, that was wrong, and that was not on you. That's on them. They brought you into something that you didn't deserve. Uh, the physical, the verbal, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional abuse that you've received, it was wrong. And it's it's not on you that it happened. It's on them, but you're the one that's bearing the, the burden of all of that. Uh, knowing that you've been second-guessed so many times over, you've been on the receiving end of ridicule or mockery, you've been shunned or scorned, all of that is is wrong, and your traumatic reaction is your body's way of saying, I deserve so much better, this was completely inappropriate, listen to the message that that's saying. Now, having said that, you might ask, well, if I've been through all of this, and, and Dr. C, I can appreciate everything you're saying, how am I going to respond? First and foremost, now, one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to go into deep isolation. Now, you're tempted to because you're thinking, well, who's going to understand what I've been through? One of the things that tends to happen when you're with that 
hyper-controlling, manipulative uh, narcissist or the group uh, is you do already isolate. Uh, when you're around other people that might know you differently, it's like, eh, I don't know if I want to be around them. I don't want to tell them my story. Nobody's going to understand. But instead, open up with someone. It doesn't have to be a large number of someones, but find a confidant. Sometimes it might be a, a therapist. Sometimes it might be a close friend or a family member who has been through some similar kind of things. Uh, but having a support group is going to be so necessary. Another thing that's going to be necessary as you try to uh, work your way through this is drop any kind of illusion that you can or should be able to reform the person who brought all of this trauma upon you in the first place. Those are disturbed individuals, and if they bring these ingredients to you in such a, a volume that it just wears you out and alters your personality, that's somebody that doesn't care about you or human nature. They don't know the, uh, the essence of love, and it's not going to be your job to make them see the light. Instead, uh, it's, it's going to be so necessary for you to reclaim a mind of freedom. Inside a narcissistic system, you're, uh, you're confined you're held down, you're imprisoned. Freedom means you get to be what you want to be. You get to decide. And so in freedom, you want to go back and re-examine your core values, re-examine your lifestyle preferences, re-examine how you're going to handle your emotions. For example, when I feel angry, what do I think is the smart way to do things? Or when I have uh, guilt or shame, What's going to be my reaction or how do, how do my preferences and values speak into my emotional management? And so ultimately, I'm hoping that you can reclaim your sense of initiative. It means you have assertiveness. You're going to stand firmly for who you are. Somebody needs to do it, and so we're going to put you in charge of that. You want to have your sense of boundaries, a, a, a well-established uh, identity about who you are and how it plays into specific uh, episodes in your life. And so there are ways to get through this. Uh, know that what you've been through is not, uh, is not uh, something of your own choosing or making. Uh, it was done to you, and now it becomes your job to take front and center stage and saying, I'm going to decide uh, what it means for me to be a healthy individual. Uh, sure enough, narcissists can stay in your head for a long time. There's no timetable on getting uh, over some of this post-traumatic stress. But hopefully, as you understand what you've been through, you understand the impropriety and what your better alternatives are, you can walk away from this knowing that you're going to have a much deeper appreciation for the things in life that are good and right. Uh, ingredients like love and peace and respect and honor. Uh, that's something that the narcissist was incapable of giving you on any kind of consistent basis. I'm wanting you to claim that and claim it for all it's worth. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness of what you might be dealing with. If you haven't already done so, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button, too, because that'll help. We'll keep more videos coming in your direction. I, I truly appreciate you letting me be on your journey with you. If you, haven't, uh, if you have a need, I would encourage you to seek out counseling, like I mentioned. Uh, we have a sponsor, uh, the people at BetterHelp.com. They're an online therapy resource. Uh, and uh, if you can go down beneath, uh, beneath the video, there's a link that will take you to their website, and, and you can choose from a whole host of licensed professional therapists. I strongly encourage, if you've been through something like this, particularly with the lingering elements, that you uh, would uh, make, it, that, make that available to yourself. We have my therapeutic courses, and these are very extensive. They're like uh, signing up for online classes, multiple videos and written documents and guided questions. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me about your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We also have my podcast. We have our uh, website with many articles. Uh, we have uh, uh, my books and other resources. So, um, and again, thank you for letting me be a part of your journey with you. Post-traumatic stress is definitely not a simple thing to get beyond, but I think the more you are able to understand it and know it and recognize uh, you know, the making of it, then it is going to be possible for you to re uh, recoup who you are and recoup, recoup your sense of synergy as you move forward. And in doing so, I hope that you can actually see yourself as becoming a person of peace. It is possible.